Hi everybody, it's Pastor Mark here wanting to welcome you back to online worship at East Brady Baptist Church for the week of December 18th, 2022. So glad that you could join us for this fourth and final Sunday in Advent. As I've been kind of sharing with you throughout the season, uh, Advent is a season within the church that immediately precedes Christmas. So starting four Sundays out from Christmas, the church starts to celebrate Advent. And as we do that, we look to the Advent wreath each week and we light a new candle each week to remember something special about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming into the world. So the first uh, Sunday of Advent, we lit the prophecy candle. The second Sunday, we lit the, uh, the Bethlehem candle. And then last Sunday, the third Sunday, we lit the shepherd's candle. So today we turn to the fourth and final candle on the Advent wreath that counts down until uh, the, we light the Christ candle on Christmas Eve. So the fourth candle of the Advent wreath is the angel's candle. The angel's candle announces that the babe of Bethlehem, whose birth the angels announced on Christmas, will come again with all his angels to take us home and establish his everlasting kingdom. The revelation of John records what that day will be like in the 22nd chapter. John writes, the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. I, Jesus, I, Jesus have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the waters of life. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. O oh, wisdom, holy word of God, Jesus Christ, all things are in your hands. Come and show us the way to salvation. God of tender mercies, you have called us to walk with you and work with you and follow you. However, there are times we'd prefer to go it alone or to pattern our lives around lesser heroes. Forgive us for drowning out your voice or for lazing about in the good news of our faith without considering the deeper commitment into which you call us. By your Holy Spirit, make us whole through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, for our announcements this week, I would like to just remind you that we've got our regularly scheduled Bible study uh, this Thursday, December 22nd at 10 a.m. We hold that twice a month uh, at the East Brady High Rise, uh, Allegheny Heights apartment complex here. That's at 10 a.m. This Thursday, we are still studying the book of Revelation. We'd love to see you there. Uh, it's for everyone. You don't have to live in the building to be there. Just, just come on in, and we're in the main area there. Come find us. We'd love to see you. Hey, uh, Christmas Eve, <laughs> hard to believe. It's, it's just less than a week away now. Uh, our, our candlelight communion worship will be held at 7 p.m. here at our church building at 508 Kelly's Way in East Brady. We'd love to see you here if you're in the area, if you can get out and about. Come worship with us and enjoy the evening with people. Uh, enjoy the candlelight and, and the music and come worship our great God on Christmas Eve, 7 p.m. Um, that said, I just want to remind you, if you are watching on Facebook or YouTube, won't you leave us a comment if you feel comfortable uh, letting us know that you were with us. Tell us how you're doing. And as always, if you've got a prayer request, those can also be put in the comments and we will all see them together. And, and I know I will see them and I will pray for you. And as, as you are watching, if you see those comments, I want to uh, ask you to join us in praying for one another. 
let's look now to our time of teaching. Uh, our scripture lesson this week is taken from Luke chapter 2, a familiar passage for this time of year. So if you've got a Bible or, or a device in which you use to read your Bible, won't you open it up to Luke chapter 2? I'm going to read you here in a moment from verses 8 through 20. And as always here online, we will put the words of the scripture up on screen for you as well. At Luke chapter 2, verse 8, it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told." May the Lord add his blessing to this reading and hearing of his holy word. Start off today asking you about the Emancipation Proclamation. You know what it is? I, I, I hope you are familiar with what the Emancipation Proclamation is. The Emancipation Proclamation is, was a military or, order issued to the Army and Navy of the United States by President Abraham Lincoln to take effect January 1st, 1863, during the American Civil War. It was based on the president's constitutional authority as commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Sadly, this was not a law passed by Congress. Congress did not act on this. But the Emancipation Proclamation proclaimed all slaves in Confederate territory to be forever free. That is, it ordered the Army uh, of the United States to treat as free men the slaves in the 10 states that were still in rebellion during the Civil War. Now, it's common to encounter people who claim that, hey, the Emancipation Proclamation did not immediately free a single slave. But... As a result of the proclamation, many slaves were freed during the course of the war, beginning with the day it took effect. Eyewitness accounts at places such as Hilton Head in Port Royal, South Carolina, recorded celebrations on January 1st as thousands of black people were informed of their new legal status of freedom. See, the day it was signed, the Emancipation Proclamation was proclaimed to thousands of black people. People were so excited by the news that they went to the far reaches immediately to proclaim it. It was a great proclamation. The United States finally starting to get things right in this. To those who would proclaim it, nothing would stand in their way. The right proclamation, you see, can change lives forever, forever and change them for the good. I bring it up today and remember just because it's just like, like a, a great thing in our history, but I bring it up because at Christmas time we encounter this idea of proclamation, particularly in our scripture lesson today where we read of the gathered angel choir proclaiming the good news of Jesus to the shepherds in the fields at night. You see, the angels come, they make their proclamation, and the world was changed instantly. As in the case of the Emancipation Proclamation, people's lives were impacted immediately when they heard the news, and it was good news. See, as we read the shepherds uh, leaving the fields right away to go witness what had been proclaimed to them. See, there's no waiting for them. The angelic proclamation changed the world instantly. Now, as we look at this proclamation from scriptures today, Let's briefly review some backstory. What's going on here? It's just, you know, I know it's familiar to most of us. We cover it every Christmas, but I want to make sure we're all on the same page. We all know what's going on. Most of us know. But political maneuverings, taxes, 
caused Mary and Joseph to travel to Bethlehem. If you think, you know, we're, we're just taxed now, oh, what a pain now. They've always been just things that have gone on and caused problems for people. So because of taxes, Mary and Joseph have to travel to Bethlehem while Mary is like uber pregnant. So while in Bethlehem, the time comes for Mary to give birth to her son. But hey, you know how the narrative goes. There's no room in the inn. So Mary gives birth in a place where they would keep the animals probably in a room in a relative's home or in a, a stall or something connected to a relative's home. But that's where Mary gives birth to Jesus. She places him in a feeding trough, what we call a manger, because there was nowhere else to put him. Now, out in the fields, kind of not too far away, there were shepherds who, who were doing what they do. They were watching their sheep through the night, and that's when an angel appears to them. And that's when we read of the angel's great proclamation. What did the angel proclaim? Well, first, he says, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. See, he says, my news, what I'm going to tell you here, it's going to bring joy to you. And the joy is not only for you, but it's for all people. Everyone who hears this is going to be joyful. And this news is for everyone. No one is left out. And so the angel continues. He says, do not be afraid. Peace to men on whom God's favor rests. See, the angel's the angel tells them not to be afraid because the shepherds are naturally terrified by what's going on here around them. You see, this is not normal stuff happening here. I know we tread out these gospel accounts every year at Christmas, so they start to seem ordinary or normal, or we expect to hear what's going on in them. But hey, this is not normal. These shepherds are just minding their own business, doing what they do, when suddenly the sky above them is just ripped open by the glory of God shining all around them. They're surrounded by it. So that in and of itself is terrifying. But as people, human beings, representatives of the human race, these shepherds have even deeper, long-standing reasons to be terrified by God's glory. Because as human beings, they have been at war with God. They have ignored God. They have walked away from God uh, and God's will for their lives. They have, in their own way, laughed at God. They have mocked God. They, they've put themselves before and above God. Just like you and me, they are sinners. Just like you and me, whether they recognized it or not at that time, they have been conducting a war against God. His will versus their will. His will versus your will. You see, we all conduct the same war. We're all at war with God when it's just up to us on our own. And so when the perfect almighty God comes onto the scene in all his glory, well, right away you see, oh my, I picked the losing side. God's just so great, you see it right away. And that is terrifying. See, the shepherds had every reason to be terrified by God's glory, even as we have every reason to be terrified by God's glory, because we're sinful people. But the message is, do not be afraid, because God offers you peace. That's the message. The angel says, God offers you peace out of his favor. It's out of his grace. He doesn't offer to you because of anything you've done to earn it. You know, I got into a conversation just even earlier this week with somebody about how God's grace, God's provision, the things God gives us, the good things God puts in our lives, they are never given because we have done something to deserve them. We never deserve them. They are not given because you have shown yourself to be favorable. They are given because God favors you. There's a difference. You're not favorable. You are favored. You are favored by God. See, you don't have to be afraid of God because God favors you. He offers you peace because he loves you, because he is extending that favor to you. So the start of the angel's proclamation is pretty much, hey, I bring joyful news that will bring you peace. So don't be afraid. Your time for being afraid is over. And so the angel tells them, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. I mean, here's the actual meat of the proclamation, right? Christ the Lord is born in Bethlehem. And we read that word Christ, that's just a fancy church word. That means Messiah, which is just a fancy church word. That means God's anointed one, God's chosen one. See, since the days of Isaiah, over 700 years before this, and even before that, people had been awaiting God's Messiah, God's anointed one, the one who would be sent by God to make peace in Israel, the one 
who would glorify God and his people. So the angel proclaims, he says, the one who was born in Bethlehem, he is the one. He is the Savior. See, that war you've been conducting with God because of your own rebellious nature, uh, that war that you need to be saved from, God has sent you a Savior because you cannot save yourself. See, the peace God promises you through his grace comes through his Savior. And we know now that by what Jesus came and did and said, that he saves us from our sins. Jesus saved us by dying for us and our sins, that they might be forgiven. See, the child born is the Savior who everyone needs in order to experience the peace that God is offering through his grace. The angel continued, this is a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. You see, we actually look at this and we see that there is an implied command here from the angel to the shepherds for them to go and do something. Because the angel says, you will find a baby. Question, how will the shepherds find the baby unless they are first looking for him? So you see what the angel is actually telling them. He says, you need to go look for him. You need to go seek this savior. You need to find him. You need to follow him. It's only when you seek and you find and you follow this Savior that God's promise of peace comes into your life. You can can go after God's peace in every other way, but it's only when you seek and find and follow this Savior that you will have it. That's what the angel proclaims, right? What the angel is proclaiming is the meaning of Christmas. Because of God's love for us, God has sent a Savior. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ in its most basic form here, proclaimed by the angel that first Christmas. You need a Savior. God sent a Savior. Seek and follow him, and you will be saved by him. See, this Christmas, God probably is not going to send angels to fill the night sky to proclaim this message about Jesus. It's possible God could do that. He might do that. But he's probably not going to. But the proclamation of God's grace in Jesus is absolutely necessary for us if we want to celebrate Christmas this year and every year. You can't celebrate Christmas truly without uh, the proclamation of Jesus going forward to all people. See, that's why so many of these new Christmas specials and movies that come out every year, uh, right, they just seem so hollow and generic and forgettable, and we really don't keep coming back to these new ones. Because the people who make them have done everything they can to remove the proclamation of Christ from what they are celebrating. So they're empty, right? I I think of uh, the new Guardians of the Galaxy, a holiday special that came out in Disney Plus this year. For those of you who don't know them, Guardians of the Galaxy, they're just a bunch of superheroes from Marvel comic books and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So you see them in the movies that are come out nowadays. You see the Guardians of the Galaxy hanging out with people like Captain America, Incredible Hulk, and Spider-Man. That's who they are. So there's, the special is all about these superheroes, these guardians of the galaxy. They're, they're from outer space, and they come to Earth to kind of figure out how to celebrate Christmas because their buddy is from Earth originally, and he misses Christmas, so they want to take it back to him. So they come to Earth, but all they end up with is a kidnapped Kevin Bacon of Footloose fame. See the special if you're wondering about that one. And, and a bunch of decorations and stories about Santa Claus. Now, anyone who knows me knows I love Santa Claus. I love the myth of Santa Claus. I love what he represents in terms of the truth of what God gave us at Christmas. I love Santa Claus. But Santa Claus can't save my soul or anybody else's. Christmas without the proclamation of Christ is absolutely pointless, which is why I watched that Guardians of the Galaxy special, and I thought as they're celebrating at the end, it's like, what are, what are they celebrating? It's It's pointless. And so with so many doing everything they can to bypass or ignore Jesus in their Christmas storytelling, and since God probably isn't going to send a flock of angels to proclaim the message of Christ this Christmas, that means it's up to me and you to play the role of the angels this Christmas, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in our Christmas celebrations. Don't get mad at everybody else for not doing it, but you get the work of doing it yourself. See, this is part of the mission Jesus gives to his church, every person who follows him. In Matthew chapter 28 and 19, it's a great commission. We've looked at it often. Jesus tells people, he says, go and make disciples. Go and make people who know about me and who follow me and who trust in me for eternal life. 
we can't make followers of Jesus unless we are telling people the good news. Now, some people will say, well, I'll try, you know, I'll just, I'll just be kind and friendly to people and I'll do good things for them uh, to show them about Jesus. And thank you so much for doing that, for that attitude. That's a godly attitude. You keep doing that. But more is necessary. The proclamation of the gospel is needed. Hey, Romans 10, 17, the apostle Paul writes, faith comes from hearing the message. And with that, in Romans 10, 14, he writes, and how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? That word translated as preaching here means proclaiming to them. How can anyone believe unless someone proclaims to him or her the gospel of Jesus Christ? It has to be proclaimed. We are all called to play the role of the angel, to proclaim the good news of great joy. God has sent a Savior. God has given us a Savior. Sadly, our lives prove that many of us are unprepared to play this role of the angel. You see, when was the last time you proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ to somebody? Not just, hey, I invited them to church, but hey, when was the last time you even did that? And not just tell them, hey, you should do this or that to be a better person who God is proud of. No, uh, please continue to do those things. Those are good things. But when was the last time you explained the gospel of Jesus to someone? Anyone proclaim the gospel this week? I, I mean, I, I get to do it. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> so it, it's kind of easy for me. I get to do it all the time as part of our ministries to teens and children in this community with our community partners and through this church. I get to tell them the gospel all the time. You say, well, hey, you know, then, then that's easy. And you're right, it's easy. It's easy when you put yourself in a place, when you're taking opportunities to get in places and in ministry that make it a little bit easier to share the gospel, to put yourself in places that create spaces where talking about Jesus is expected. Or how about this? Are you proclaiming the gospel to your kids, your grandkids, nieces, nephews, neighbors' kids, friends' kids? They're not hearing it anywhere else anymore. It's not part of what they just know growing up anymore. How about your own grown kids, parents, cousins, uncles, neighbors, friends? See, if we're going to celebrate Christmas for what it really is, we need to be proclaiming the gospel of Jesus. That's what it takes uh, in order uh, for Christmas to go forward. Uh, the shepherds understood that, right? We read Luke 2, 17. They, they go and they, they see uh, the Christ child and they worship him. And then it says, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. You know what the shepherds go and do? They go and proclaim. They go and proclaim it. Why aren't we proclaiming the gospel? Especially as we celebrate Christmas. What is the reason or reasons you, perhaps, haven't shared the good news like the angel shared at that first Christmas? Maybe it's because you think, well, that's somebody else's job. Somebody else in the church. Somebody gets paid to do that. Well, I, I got news for you. That, that, that's hogwash if that's how you feel. True, some will be gifted and called by God to share the good news in a greater fashion than most others. But the command to love others by telling them how to be saved, that's given to all followers of Jesus. Maybe you've lost sight of the urgency, but everybody, it is urgent. The clock's ticking for the people you know and love. Their lives are passing by. Sadly, maybe some of them will never see another Christmas. And the truth is that no one, no one is guaranteed another year, week, or even hour. And on top of that, the return of Christ may happen at any moment. The clock's ticking. There is urgency for people to hear the gospel. There is urgency for you to share it. Or maybe truth be told, you really are just ashamed of the gospel. Maybe you don't really trust that God will bear fruit and bring others to faith through your proclamation. Maybe you don't really trust that God will bring happiness and comfort and joy even when you are mocked for speaking of his love. I mean, for some, maybe, maybe some... Uh, watching this right now, maybe you are not proclaiming the good news of Jesus because you have not yet accepted it into your life. If that's the case, you, by your own rebellion, are at war with God. You are lost in your own rebellion, in your own sin, 
but you can have peace with God and you can live in his love forever. You need a savior, the savior, Jesus. Won't you turn from your rebellion, turn from your own way, turn from your sin and place your trust in Jesus today and follow him and love him for the rest of your life. See, God des God's desire is for all of his children to be proclaimers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is likely not going to fill the night sky with angels proclaiming it this Christmas. Because that's our role this Christmas and beyond. That's what God calls us to do. Hey, folks, it's Christmas, the season when people are a little more open to talking about such things. The season when people turn on the TV, they see Linus on a Charlie Brown Christmas special. He's quoting scripture, and rather than being offended by it, they're comforted by it. See, it's a good time to begin proclaiming the gospel. Start today and live your Christmas more fully this season. Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for loving us, for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, this, this precious gift on that first Christmas who came into the world to live uh, the perfect life, to offer it up as a sacrifice on the cross for us, that when we turn to him, we would have forgiveness of sins. We would have the gift of eternal life. We will be with you forever, God. So I thank you for giving that to us. I pray now if there's anybody out there who hasn't accepted that gift yet, that this would be the day. Won't you work by your Holy Spirit in their hearts to bring them that faith, that they would turn from their self and their own rebellion, their own war, and turn to you and have peace with you. And God, forgive us for those times when we have remained silent, when we have failed to take the opportunities or even look for opportunities to be engaged in places where we can share the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, particularly this time of year. Forgive us for just getting angry at other people for not doing it. Forgive us for not doing it. And to move us by your spirit, empower us, open our eyes to many ways and places and opportunities you give us to actually outright share, say the words and speak the words of the gospel of Jesus Christ that people might hear and believe unto eternal life and that you in all of it would be glorified. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we come to the conclusion of another online worship service. So glad that you could join us here. Just a one last reminder, our Christmas Eve service will be held at 7 p.m., so I invite you all, won't you come join us? Uh, just so you know, because I'll be on vacation and other things going on in nature of our worship services, there will be no online worship on December 25th or on January 1st. But both of those days, both holidays, we will be here. Those are both Sundays. So we will be here at our church building at 1030 a.m. Uh, to, to worship on those days. So won't you join us and, and, uh, so we can come together and we can all together have a Merry Christmas. In a moment, we are going to sing together the, the great Christmas hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High. But first, won't you receive the blessing? May the grace of Christ our Savior, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.